Hey everybody, I'm Howard Levy and I'd like to welcome you to Thursday Night Happening, our first edition of this continuing program. I've missed performing, I have to say, uh, and since this pandemic isn't going to go away anytime soon, we decided to start this series every Thursday night and each night it's going to focus on a different theme. Tonight I'm calling it Americana and uh, it's just music that represents America, some of which is original tunes that I've written, some of which are things that you might all recognize. And so why don't I just jump right into it. Um, this is a, a very, very beautiful song that anybody who was born in America and many people outside of the country have heard. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful song. Uh, the melody's beautiful, the lyrics are beautiful, and the people who wrote the melody and lyrics, there's two different people, they never met. Uh, but it was put together, and it's called America the Beautiful. some of you are singing the words um, yeah we have a lot to overcome right now in America the beautiful and hopefully if enough good people get together we can help overcome it and one of the ways to do that is with music because I mean that's the that's what I do music and I, I really really miss playing for you so hope you're enjoying it uh, the next few tunes I'd like to play are two tunes that I've written uh, I wrote them on piano the first one it's a blues, and the second one is too. You know, blues is really the greatest musical form that America has gifted the world with. From the African-American tradition, combined with European harmony, 
Blues is a form of music that has spread all over the world and it's beloved by people everywhere. Everywhere, anyone who hears the blues immediately falls in love with it. And so uh, this one, I was inspired by uh, listening to a radio show all about the great migration of black people from the South to Chicago in the early 20th century. Uh, they were living under really terrible conditions. Uh, it just got so bad that a lot of them just couldn't live down there anymore. And they came up to the cities up north, bringing with them incredible, vibrant culture and establishing their own communities and uh, their own newspapers. And uh, in, in the south side of Chicago, uh, they urbanized the blues. You know, people started plugging in so they could be heard. And, uh, and they call Chicago the home of the blues, but it wouldn't have happened if not for the Great Migration. So this song is about kind of going back in my mind uh, when I was listening on the radio and to the hard times these people were going through. And it's kind of a, a throwback to the uh, old days when blues wasn't necessarily 12 bars long and all the bars weren't f four beats long. And, uh, and then I'm going to segue into another tune uh, about halfway through it, I guess. So here we go with the hard times blues. <laughs>
All right. Well, that was called Miss Wilson. It was uh, named after a very high-spirited young lady I met many, many years ago. Uh, she was from Louisiana, and uh, that came up with some of the flavors of that time. So once again, I'd like to welcome everybody. Some of you uh, are, might be just tuning in. Some of you might have tuned in from the beginning. And uh, we're here at uh, my home studio here in the Chicago area. This is called Thursday Night Happening. We're going to be doing this every week. And the thing that I want to emphasize about it is uh, I am begging for money, but not for myself. Uh, we're trying to collect funds for the Greater Chicago Food Depository, which is a, a really, really wonderful organization that provides meals for people who just can't afford to buy food. And in the present situation, this cause is even more urgent than it is in the normal situation where there's a lot of poor people who can't afford to buy food for themselves and their families. So please, if you can find it in your hearts to donate and be generous, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. And we'd love to send as much money to this organization as possible. And uh, hope you do. And at, at this time, I'd like to check out, maybe there's some comments on the screen and uh, just uh, see what's going on here. Uh, let's see, Rory Ridley, uh, Robbie Folks. Oh yeah, hey Robbie, hey Ann Feldman. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Mad Cat. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, yes, many friends. Oh, uh, Jeannie Qual. Oh, oh, hey from Appleton. Yes. Oh my goodness, uh, lots of you, Melissa from Nashville. I mean from uh, Atlanta, and uh, ah, I'm glad that. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the way it looks, Larry. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Matt. That's real sweet of you to say it. I'm a little nervous, you know. Hey, Ruben. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, mi hermano, Ruben Alvarez. Yeah, indeed, no less. That's right. Oh, oh, yes, we're trying to make it look good. This will be rebroadcast on, we're going to put it on YouTube after we're done, and you can hear all the good and bad things that I've played tonight. And I mean bad, like bad and also bad. Hey, Norman, my buddy. Yeah. Oh, there's lots of people watching. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're, we're uh, my highly skilled technical director is uh, in charge of all the cameras. Hey, Rachel. My goodness. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Good to see you. Let's keep that rolling. Let's see who else is here. Anthony. Oh, hi from, can't tell where. Oh, hello, Louis uh, from Philly. Great composer, Luis, Dr. Luis Delis. Oh, so many people, you know. Uh, oh, hi, Greta. Oh, wonderful to see you. Nice to see your name on the screen. Uh, th this is very heartwarming to me because now I really do feel like I'm playing for an audience and not just playing for some microphones and cameras and getting all nervous. Uh, you guys have calmed me down. Hey, Eric. Oh, thanks, man. And Peter, yeah, Cafe Express. May it live in all our memories. Yeah. Oh, Stephanie. Hey. <laughs> oh, Ann Rasmussen. Oh, there you go. Bert. Cool. My brother-in-law. Oh. Okay. Well, I think it's I think it's time to continue. I mean, that's more fun for me than playing. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to continue along here with a little, a little more Americana because. Uh, I mean, I don't think of myself as somebody who plays Americana, but I do, really. I, I, I've loved all different kinds of music now for like 50 years. I, I, I listen to everything from every country in the world. And uh, this uh, next little medley is going to be one of the most famous old American songs. No one knows who wrote this. It, it's been turned into a sea shanty. It's kind of a somebody who's setting out on a long voyage and saying farewell and uh, he's also saying farewell uh, in some versions to the woman he loves who's the daughter of an Indian chief it's called O Shenandoah and you know the Shenandoah Valley in in Virginia is named after Chief Shenandoah uh, a lot of American names are names from Native Americans and uh, Native Americans play a very large part in America's musical heritage. Just a tremendous amount of blues singers and jazz singers are part Native American. They have a special vocal quality. And uh, I don't want to give a lecture here, but there's a lot of it all mixed up in American blues and jazz and folk music. 
And then I'm going to segue into a, a, an old fiddle tune called Red Haired Boy, which is music of the settlers from the British Isles, but also mixed with some blues. Because in the Appalachian Mountains, all these different things came together like in a big stew pot of, uh, of British Isles settlers and African Americans and Native Americans. It's a, a very rich cultural blend that, that created what's now called old timey and bluegrass music. And so here goes Shenandoah. Ha <laughs> ha 
It's a lot of breathing sitting down, I tell you. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Oh, I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed playing. I almost feel like I'm, like I'm playing for somebody. So uh, once again, I, I just resisted doing this for a long time, but now I really feel it's also an obligation as a performer to to bring music to people because that's what we do, and, and hopefully I'm making people feel better. Hopefully making some of you feel better. Uh, if I were on stage, I would say, can I get an all right? <laughs> but I'm not, so uh, I'm, can I get a virtual all right? So uh, next tune I'd like to play is a sort of, it takes off on that uh, idea of uh, Appalachian music and bluegrass music. As some of you might know, and as almost all of you might know, I've had the great good fortune of uh, playing with uh, the most innovative and wonderful banjo player and composer in the history of American music, Mr. Bela Fleck. And we started a band together called Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones many moons ago. And even before I met Bela, I was well aware of, of bluegrass music and I was a fan of a band that he was in called New Grass Revival. And uh, I actually play mandolin. So I learned some of these old fiddle tunes on mandolin and tried playing them on the harmonica. And uh, just over the years, I, I got a chance to play with more, more bluegrass people and uh, obviously a lot of folk people as well. Uh, but one of the, my favorite gigs was in New York City. Um, there was a uh, re very avant-garde string quartet, and they sound like this when they tune. They tune in fourths, you know. I can't tune any of those notes for you right now, but believe me, that's the way they sound. And then they also sound like this and like this viola and the cello. Uh, and they hired me and uh, this banjo player, Dean Osborne, who's from the Osborne family. This is bluegrass royalty. They're from a tiny little town in Kentucky in Hazard County called Hyden. And Dean and I really hit it off. And he brought me down there to this bluegrass academy that he runs. And when he introduced me, we played at a place called Symphony Space, which is on Broadway on the Upper West Side. And he said, I met Howard Levy. We played together on Broadway. And he, you know, Broadway's a long way from Haydn, you know? So I always had that notion in my mind. When I wrote this tune, um, I called it Bluegrass on Broadway. And I've got to actually played it on Prairie Home Companion, uh, finally, one time on piano, because it's partially a tribute to Rich Dworsky, the great music director and pianist of that show. So if Rich, if you're watching, uh, I wrote this largely because of you as well. So, wish me luck. Uh, this is called Bluegrass on Broadway. I have to remember how it starts. Yes, I remembered. Okay, here it goes.
was a wild version of it, I must say. A uh, few little memory gaps, but uh, I don't have a chance to play it a second time. I wish I did. I usually play it faster. It makes it easier. Um, but also, I, I do want to mention to you that this is an exciting week because not only am I starting this little show, but also uh, we have totally revamped levyland.com, which is my website. And uh, up on this new website, you can download all of my CDs and actually also sheet music, including the sheet music for that last tune, uh, which will be up there in a few days. We just have to do a few final edits to the music. And we'll be selling uh, that and my book and all sorts of other stuff on there. It's very exciting. Um, so before I close out with the last tune, I have to introduce this. This, I believe, it's kind of the quintessential American folk tune. It's written by this guy from Oklahoma named Woody Guthrie. The thing about Woody is that he was kind of a universal person. I mean, he was from Oklahoma, but he traveled everywhere, and he got to see what life was like everywhere in America, and he ended up settling down in New York City of all places. And he was kind of a neighbor of mine. While I was growing up, I didn't know this, at the time, but I was grow, I grew up uh, in a little neighborhood called Seagate, which is right next to a very famous place in Brooklyn called Coney Island, which has the amusement park and the boardwalk and the original Nathan's. We used to go to Nathan's at night all the time and get the, uh, the hot dogs and the French fries, which were just absolutely delicious. And my mom uh, was looking for dance classes for my, my little sister, Regina. And she found this woman named Marjorie who had uh, a modern dance studio. Turns out it was Woody Guthrie's wife. Woody married Marjorie, uh, who was a dancer with the Martha Graham Dance Company in New York. And that's about as far away from uh, Oklahoma in the 1930s as you can get. Uh, so, uh, you know, Woody ended up in Coney Island, and Bob Dylan made a pilgrimage out there to visit him uh, before he passed away, before Woody passed away. <laughs> So there's all this history in that apartment where that dance studio was. And later, I got to play with Arlo, Woody's son, in a memorial concert for Steve Goodman, because Arlo recorded The City of New Orleans, which I played with Steve many times. And uh, I also got to meet Woody's daughter, Nora, just a wonderful person. Just by chance, I was playing in a festival in Germany in a little town called Rudolstadt. So the winding roads sometimes bring everybody together from Coney Island to Chicago to Rudolstadt, Germany. So this is Woody's great song, and this song has it all. It's got pathos and beautiful imagery, and it's got some irony, too, in the lyrics. Because this land is made for you and me, and uh, indeed it was. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all of you who tuned in. And uh, I just want to remind you once again to, uh, if you find it in your hearts, to donate to our wonderful cause, the Greater Chicago Food Depository. And I'd also like to make a toast with this fine California wine to all the first responders and healthcare people who risk their lives daily to keep us safe and well. And they are very, very brave. And I, my, I just have gratitude from the bottom of my heart from all these people, for all these people who are doing their jobs at great personal uh, danger to themselves. And um, just hopefully it, those of you who brought your own bottle uh, will also raise a glass with me to them. All right. So thanks. And uh, before I say a final goodbye, I do have to remind uh, myself <laughs> that next week when we do this again, uh, the theme is going to be Brasiliana, uh, Musica Brasileira, uh, because I have had a, a deep love and involvement with Brazilian music since the late 1970s uh, due to this amazing community of Brazilian musicians who live in Chicago. I, I, that's what turned me on to it, really, is, is meeting a whole bunch of wonderful musicians here and having them teach me a lot and, and, and playing with them and then eventually playing with m musicians in Brazil and Brazilian musicians all over the world. So uh, it's one of the, the greatest uh, fountains of music, uh, Brazil. So thank you very much for listening, and hopefully you'll tune in next Thursday at 8 p.m., and uh, we'll see you again. Love to you all.